All right, man. Uh, hold on. Let me check to make sure you hear me. First of all, test. Perfect. Um, I'm gonna be multitasking during this one, but I wanted to get this out of the way because I didn't think it was gonna be too difficult to point out mistakes. How could I have healed you guys better when I was Moira on Paris during the dive comp? Um, this should be an easy question. I'll skip to that one directly and then I'll go through everything else that you could have done differently. But we had you, I had you play Moira because of the fact that I knew you couldn't position her on the shield if they did have a bunker because I was expecting the bunker. I know you don't know any positions for Ana and first point of Paris. And yeah, you know it now. You know what you're supposed to do now. But I think that a live demonstration would make more sense to you personally. We'll see though. If this ever loads, pulls this. I had this preloaded. Twenty minutes. Go. There you go. My God. Okay. So your team is coordinating a dive. You can hear them say when they're going. So don't know what you're going to be able to see, so I'm going to pick two different colors. Uh, for starters, this... I know you don't know the colors, but that color will be your team. It's a blue. And this color will be the enemy team. It's a pinkish. They're completely different colors, so you should be able to see them. So... For instance here... You're playing a dive composition. You have a Winston and a Diva. For the most part, your character is not effective with a dive comp, but this is Paris. It has a very small edge, and that's where you're looking to dive. So as you can see, your range could definitely reach there. Not from here. This is the worst spot for you to be in. Absolutely the worst spot. So, as your team coordinates the dive, you should be looking on how to be able to get to this edge. You have a few options. I'm saying this edge right now because this is probably the best spot, but you do have a few options. If they start to contest you at this edge right underneath it, which they probably won't because it'll give your dive free range, you can go left around or right around. They can't contest both sides. If they contest both sides, your dive kills them. Your far on this side kills them. And you have a soldier in the back that's focusing the shield down. So. That's your plan. Your plan is to sit under here for the most part. And then if they maybe contest you, which they really shouldn't if everybody's playing correctly. You have escape routes. And then you can even shift back. But you... In order to get here, you should probably shift forward in order not to get fucked by that Bastion. So, team's diving. As soon as they say they're diving, you can shift forward. There's no... There's nothing to be scared of. Everything They're playing a bunker composition. Everything is stationary. They're not going to jump on you. It's a bunker composition. Sun you take too long. That's already dead. Was that the first dive? Did you guys do it before? You guys did it a few times already. You guys were already tilted at that point. I want to see some previous ones. Okay. Your team says when they're going to dive in. I know that for a fact. There's the dive. You're not in position for it. That's, this is why you weren't able to heal. Great idea throwing out the healing orb. At least you tried there. But, 
you don't need to shift this way. There is a staircase around and up, but you don't need to shift that way. You have vision of your team from this angle. You can just continue to play that angle. Look, your team, as a dive composition, your dive tanks jump onto the enemy and stay around a ledge. They need to have an escape. They use their jumps. They always need to find a way to escape if things get too rough. That's the for that's that's the reason you play dive comp. So for you to go around one, two, three, and you also miss your heal, there's four or five seconds without any kind of healing. And now you're just lost. You don't know what you're doing. Yeah, you, you just know what you're doing right there. They're dead already. I want to see that now. Okay. Your team is saying when they're going to dive. You should be in position to help them. Look. They say they're going to jump. One. Right. It takes you three seconds in order to get in anywhere in position to even see your Winston. You're still not in healing range. It takes you three full seconds in order to get vision of your Winston. And then you just shift into a wall. And you're healing the air. You were definitely useless as Moira. But it's not the reason you're saying. It's not because you can't come up to heal us. It's because you don't know how to come up to heal us. Ana, you're not wrong. Ana is the more effective option for what we were trying to do. But the reason you didn't play Ana is because I'm Shaw Caller. This, this is going to sound biased, but I'm Shaw Caller. I. I have an understanding on how my teammates play. If I know that out of three open division games, you couldn't find out where to position yourself as Ana, I know that you're not going to know how to position yourself in order to heal through a bunker composition without getting fucked. So, let me guess. You probably start firing into a shield because you can't find a way around it. Team already misses. Zai is already dead. Patrice is already dead. You have no idea on how to get around to see your Winston. This is when you all need to be grouped. You don't sit back there. When your team tells you that they're going to push together as a squad, there's no reason for you to be all the way in the back, especially when you have to cross their team. When you have to cross their team, you're the easiest target. They can see you right here. They can tell you to pick off. It's not difficult. Look, I'll show you. Reinhardt's already here. I don't know if you can see that with the black, but Reinhardt's already there. Your Zarya, which is your second person that can save you, is right here already. Your Lucio with the speed is right here. Your f I don't think you have a fire anymore. And your soldier is right in front of you. Your soldier has a sprint. He's not going to be in front of you for that much longer. First of all, your Zarya takes massive damage because you can't see her to begin with. Because you're in the back. While trying to run through their composition. Your Reinhardt's up here, so he can't heal you. Uh, he can't shield you, sorry. All the way over here. Your soldier is sprinting. He's not going to be able to help you.
let's try this again. Your Reinhardt doesn't know you're out of position, but he's already pushing into this area. Zarya's still critical. She's more focused on keeping herself alive. And you're out here in the open with the enemy team directly behind you. So because of your positioning, you're now going to get pulled back. You're dead. Which, by the way... Twenty-two seconds. It takes you two full seconds to realize that your Zarya is critical. Alright. Hopefully that helped you with your Moira. Uh, we're gonna back up a bit. Okay. That's not on you. Not on you either. There's not much competition you could have there. This is where things start to become on you. Uh, so we lose to flankers all the time. We're constantly being told by our team that we need to swap the Ana because she lacks the mobility to deal with the flanker. Ana is one of the supports that has a harder time dealing with flankers, but in a team composition, that's not an issue. In a solo queue mentality, that's an issue. But when you're a team and you can call out these things, the fact that Ana has a difficult time with with those flankers by herself should not be an issue and a reason to swap off. You have a sleep. You have 40 damage per second practically with your shots you have your nade that antis you guys get knocked in still what's being said it's not too bad from you we are able to walk forward You look over, that's not your fault. You missed several shots, that is your fault. One, two, you missed two shots, and then you both die to the tracer. And you get wiped. Alright, what happens next? They call out the tracers on the left. Travis is dead. You're stuck. There's no escaping that. Pay attention to that. Pay attention to this. Zero H E. Still have this. Now at ninety three percent. Three of your teammates are dead. This one. This one, and this one. So, why are you holding this? Your team has mentioned multiple times that this is going to be the last fight and you have to touch point. So, why are you holding that?
Alright, another Moira game. New team's full health right now. That wasn't necessary. You're in a really bad position. Good shift. You're ready out of healing. And only one of your teammates was critical that entire time. You're always out of position. You can't tell when your team's rotating, and that's your team shouldn't have to call it out. Especially when your main tank is dead. Like These two were over here, on this side. And then they suddenly moved over here while the enemy was pushing up. Maybe that's time for you to realize that they're backing out. There you go. Do something, throw an orb, shift, get an angle on your Rhine so that it's not a in vain fight. Because if he dies, you you don't win the fight. Period. If it's a 5v6 and you're down your Reinhardt, you guys can't even push in. Can get the angle. You just sucked at your teammate instead of healing. You just threw an orb at a wall. Your team's still full. Your team didn't need that one. You're telling your team that they're walled off, but... You can shift this way, over on here, and you have vision of them. You ready? Look. You ha If you come around this, you have vision of this entire area. You still have your Moira ult. You charge it pretty fast. You're just telling your team that they're walled off and it's basically a loss fight. That was a waste the fight was already lost. You might as well throw your damage orb in there because you see all of them there and they have nothing to contest it. Your healing orb isn't going to do anything. As soon as you got stuck in the Zarya ult, you should have shifted away. It takes you out of the Zarya ult. You become invulnerable and it can't affect you. Your team is still practically full health. It's a waste of a healing orb. You can still shift. You. The Rhine's directly next to you when you hear the shatter. It's extremely ballsy for you not to shift. Yeah, you're just getting knocked around. You're letting them bully you. You don't play with any of your mobility. You don't use any of your mobility cooldowns. Even if you're in danger. That one's game. Okay. Next one. On. All right, here we go. Uh, 
That was practically a waste. You have no idea where they are. You get 15%, so it's not too bad. You had your shift up that entire time. Like I said, you don't use your mobility cooldowns. Push in with the team here, don't get caught out of position. If your team says that they're pushing into this area, right here, you shouldn't sit out in the open with their team staring at this area. It was smart to play around environment once you got hit by something. Decent healing orb. You still have shift. You don't use your mobility abilities when you need them. A waste of a healing orb. Your team is practically full health. You, right here, you might as well ult. You just block the Rhine ult and you guys need something in order to push forward. If you use your ult early, you can damage the enemies while also overhealing your team. You don't need to wait until your team is critical. You just get gunned down here because you didn't play around environment. Waste of a healing orb again. Nobody's critical. Nobody needs the healing. Shift out. Shift out. Shift out. Okay, don't shift out. You've had ult this entire time. You're now healing the enemy, Reinhardt. You still have ult. Shift out. Okay, you shift out and then you ult. If you're going to do anything in that order, you shift out of the Zarya ult and then you ult. Okay, Angle. Uh... I would prefer for you to play... Got two options. If your team wants to play directly on bridge, you hold this angle right here. So that if a flanker's in your back line, the people that can help you will help you. That's one of the options. And your second option is right here because you have vision of most of the area that your team can play while also maintaining the high ground for any flankers that could go but when you're ground level see if you were up there right now you'd have all of this vision right here from this angle onward from the end of this house so you'd have a pretty Decent amount of vision. I don't recommend the high ground until your team starts backing up, and that's when you learn rotations. But an option if you don't know rotations. But this angle, directly on point, the enemy wants to go to point. So you sitting on the point as a support, it's two birds with one stone. You're out of position as a support, and they need to get the point. They're, they're already going to point. At least make it harder for them to try and get you. Some people say that the left hand side on stairs is a decent spot. The only issue with that is when you start challenging better teams, they'll come through here and directly rush you. So it's not the best spot. And then if they have a sniper, they can play right here. And if it's a good sniper, they can also get you as well. So I prefer the area back there that I told you about earlier. 
not gonna say anything about the Ninja have it back. Fine heal so far. Dude. In a really bad spot right now. Rotations, Rudy. Remember your rotations. They're contesting point right now. You're playing a sniper healer. The point is getting overcrowded. Why don't you start rotating to the high ground or somewhere safe as opposed to directly on the point? You missed your sleep. You don't have your own nade for yourself. You have nothing that can save yourself. If they start focusing you, which Mercy does because she realizes that you're out of position and can't save yourself, you're going to die. And then your team is going to die in turn because you can't heal them. Rotations, Rudy. As soon as they come to the point, go in here and up here onto this edge. Who's going to contest you then? They have nothing to contest you. Hammond? Possibly. Tracer has to come all the way around on coast and flank you. By then, you can tell your team that she's up there, contest her by yourself, or drop back down onto point and do the whole thing over again. Go back in, take the health pack, come back around. It's, it's a game, Rudy. You gotta use your rotations more. That's the loss. Okay, moving on. Paris, I just watched Paris. Let me see defense of Paris. I use the fence. This angle isn't that bad. I wouldn't say it's the best one, but it's definitely not the worst one. Um, personally, if I'm playing Ana and I can't play with my team because we're scared that they're going to have a flanker or a full dive. I play right on the point. There's a house over here. Inside, there's a piano and then a balcony on top. I play on this balcony because you can still see your team while also providing covers of the street. If they go in through police, you can get a nade in there. But as soon as they're in through police, you start making your rotations into this spot that you're in right now. If somebody starts to chase you and they go into your balcony on point, then you start making rotations towards your team. It, you have to play your rotations or else you're going to die. It's about being at the right place at the right time. If you can't figure that out, you're going to die. This is a fine spot. There's a Reaper behind you that you haven't noticed. Let me see if I can hear this. You hear him shadow step. You know he's behind you. He, he fired a shot. Fired two shots. Also top right, it says that Reaper... It says that Tyson died to Reaper, and you knew that Tyson was behind you. You have no game sense. You have no awareness. You're blocking a lot of things. If you have the game sense, then you're able to coordinate where you're going to go on the map. If you can coordinate where you're going to go on the map, you can rotate. If you can rotate, then this doesn't happen. You don't get killed by a flanker that you can hear. Because if you can hear them, you rotate to your next area. Alright. Done here. Hope that helped. See you later, man.